You need a bit of Betty Bookworm, who gets you reading like a real big nerd. You need a bit of Betty Bookworm. So come on, booklings, grab a black dress and we'll all sing, though none of you know the word. Hey guys, welcome to Books and Blue Stockings. I'm Betty Bookworm and I read way oh, too much. Oh, the Shannon Landon, the days are long and the nights are frightening. Nothing matters anyway, that's the hell of it. What are you doing? You're about to review Phantom of the Paradise. No, we're reviewing the other musical where Jessica Harper gets manipulated by a narcissistic psychopath. Oh, big man on campus. Uh, shock treatment. I didn't even know there was a third Jessica Harper film. Oh, yeah, there is. <laughs> a oh, Neanderthal yeah. goes to college, and she is like a psychiatrist in it. But no, you're talking shock treatment. Yeah, shock treatment. Yeah, yeah, shock treatment. Yes, the less than heartwarming, incredibly mind-altering sequel to Rocky Horror Picture Show. But why are you here? Because, bookworm, I want to put sanity back on the menu. Really? Because it kind of just seems like you want to derail my review and, um, quote the movie a lot. That too. Mm. Shock Treatment is Richard O'Brien's continuation of Brad and Janet's story. It's more like an alternate universe. Yeah, whatever. So Brad and Janet are- Asshole! Slut! So Brad and Janet are now married and live in the wholesome town of Denton, USA, which exists solely in a television studio. Uh, did you know they had to film the entire movie inside a studio because the Screen Actors Guild had gone on strike? That's why they weren't able to actually shoot the movie in Denton, Texas. I did know that because I wrote that line. Breaking the fourth wall. It's meta. Brad and Janet are selected to take part in a game show called The Marriage Maze, hosted by Dame Edna. Yeah, there's no joke there. That's really Dame Edna. I doubt your viewers are old enough to know who Dame Edna is. Well, I mean, you watch my show, don't you? Dame Edna was also the voice of Bruce the Shark in Finding Nemo. I did not know that. I just learned that today. On the show, Brad and Janet try to sort out their marriage problems while singing about kitchen appliances. Bitchin' in the kitchen or crying in the bedroom all night. After the show, Dame Edna sends Brad to a psychiatric hospital that is conveniently located in the TV studio where the typecasted incest siblings, Doctors Cosmo and Nation McKinley, diagnose Brad as an emotional cripple who hates Janet because she is not famous enough. From there, Brad gets locked up in a cage and Janet is manipulated by the doctors as well as the narcissistic head of the studio, Farley Flavors. I just want to show you all how fabulous I am. Janet soon discovers that fame isn't all it's cracked up to be, and Brad learns he has a strange, secret connection to Farley. I mean, it's not really a big secret when you realize that Brad and Farley are both played by Clifty Young. Still a spoiler. This movie didn't do so well amongst Rocky Horror fans due to a limited release, and also due to the fact that the songs are... In my opinion, much better than Rocky Horror, but they're just not as iconic. What are you talking about? Well, think about it. Rocky Horror has songs like Sweet Transvestite and Time Warp, but I mean, what songs does Shock Treatment have? Little Black Dress? Whoa, whoa. What do you have against Little Black Dress? You know what? I know it's your show. We're stopping everything right now. I demand we do a parody of Little Black Dress. How would we parody a song that's just about sewing a dress? Simple. I'll show you. First you just write, write, write. Then get into a fight, fight, fight. And after a few bite, bite, bites, I hope it's not complete shite, shite, shite. And with all your might, might, might. You scream about themes that you wish to address as you write, write, write a pretty little black dress. 
I love this movie a lot, and I love a lot of things about it, but the thing I love most is how Richard O'Brien was sort of able to predict the future that is reality television. When Shock Treatment had come out, only a couple of examples of what we would call reality TV even existed. Yeah. This sort of predicts the entire culture around reality TV and our obsession with it on an incredibly entertaining level. So it's one of my favorite terrifying visions of a dystopian future, except we're living in it now. If you think about it, uh, Jessica Harper kind of, it, Jessica Harper as Janet Majors kind of predated the whole celebrity who's famous for doing nothing. Yes. She's just come here to tell you how fabulous she is. You're so good at quoting this movie. I have should, it all memorized. You should put it on your on your resume. I think the biggest problem with this movie is that they tried to manufacture a cult following like Rocky Horror rather than just letting it happen naturally. And it could have happened naturally. Honestly, it's a good movie with or without its connection to Rocky Horror. It's a little convoluted, but that's just Richard O'Brien's style. The sets are fun, and the songs are catchy, and the characters are just as intriguing and sensual as they were in the first film. Are you okay? Something's happening, Bookworm. What's wrong? Uh, they said it would never happen, but I think... I think we just agreed on something. You're right. Well, where do we go from here? You know it. It doesn't matter, because... The sun never sets on those who ride into it. He asked me to put that line in just so that he could say it. It's the, it's the best line of the movie. It's also the last one. Spoiler! How about another song parody? Though the plot's hard to follow and some songs are hard to swallow, it's so good. Mm, it's so good. The characters are crazy, but the music is amazing. It's so good. It's so good! Oh, what a flick. What a flick. It leaves you kicking. Shot treatment sick. Shot treatment sick? Rocky's still ticking. No, oh, I'm tired of all your bookworm games. But you keep coming back, though I drive you insane. So, my dear friend, Jonathan Strickland, has uh, never seen Hocus Pocus, so naturally I had to rectify the situation. Bookworm, you said you weren't going to do this again. <sighs> but I'm going to do it anyhow, anyhow. I'm going to do it anyhow, anyhow. I'm going to do it. Just wait until next month. Wait, what's next month? Thank you very much. Oh, God. Thank you very much. No! That's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. <laughs> no, it's